A Streak of Blue. Written by The Buried Truck, adapted, edited, and told by July Leonard. Thomas and Effort gave a splendid effort building the Northwestern Railway in 1915, but they weren't suitable for mainline services. As such, the fat director purchased another engine called Henry in 1922. Although a good sort, he was prone to steaming troubles, which caused endless frustration. In 1923, he also purchased Gordon, an LNER Gresley A1 prototype express engine. Due to a lack of funds, other engines were loaned from other railways in the mainland. One of these, known only as 87546, fancied himself as the savior of the line. It had been a couple of days since 9462 was shut in the sheds for bullying Edward. Fret no longer, declared 87546, dragging Henry and his train into the big station at Vickerstown, for I have restored order to our timetable once more. Does he ever tire of all that hot air in his boiler? Thomas remarked to Edward. I'd say you, little one, the big engine beckoned to Thomas. Be a good lackey and take away my coaches in the, ahem, indisposed away. I must rest my aching wheels. Evidently not, evidently not, murmured Edward darkly. As Thomas buffered up, Henry could not even meet his gaze. I'm so sorry, he sighed. He should be sorry, retorted Thomas. One day he'll get his. That night, Thomas retired to the shed at Vickerstown. A vulgar discause greeted him. You know, 87546 boasted loudly to 9462, I do sympathize with the fat director, wasted what little hard-earned money he had on a mite, an antique, and an invalid. He looked across to Henry, sleeping, as the workmen tried to mend him. I'm the real bargain, the strength of three for the coal consumption of one. Only a matter of time before he purchased me and 9462 from the LNER. The fat director, Edward interjected, faves his engines with good character. You leave much desire to that department. And where has that good character lead you, hmm? Replied, replied 87546. Certainly not the main line. Speed and strength of all that matters there. When I pull coaches, you merely see a streak of blue. Engines like you fade into the background. I'd like to see you do my work without falling to pieces. He turned, to 94, he turned back to 9462, who agreed. Now of a more pressing matter, when 9462 and I are purchased, what do you think m mine proper name shall be? I fancy something regal. Lord Frederick Raggerby has a certain charm to it, no? Thomas was about to retort, but Edward gave him a look. Save your steam. He muttered. It's no use arguing with him, or 9462 for that matter. They stared at the loaned engines with contempt. Henry, on the other hand, who only pretended to sleep, had heard everything and began making a plan. The next morning, 87546 awoke to a startling sight. There was Henry, hissing and wishing halfway on the turntable. What in the world is this? Oh, ho, oh, ho, oh, oh, dear, Henry coughed feebly. Thought the men had made me better. Well, get better and out of my way this instant, growled 87546. My admiring passengers are waiting. I demand extra occasion at once. But the other engines had already left for work, except for 9462, who was, shut in the sh who was still shut in the shed for his recent bullying for Edward. They couldn't have helped anyhow, but there was no way onto the turntable. Worse and eh? worse and worse, the fat, the fat director scowled worryingly. The passengers cannot be kept waiting. I'm sorry, Edward, 
As the others are gone, you'll have to take the coaches instead. Edward gulped, staring at the lawn train. Begging your pardon, sir, but this is a bit beyond my capabilities. Not if I can help you, bubbled Thomas, shuffling alongside. Two engines are better than one, sir. Besides, the other engines can manage their own shunting for a while. The fat director thought about it and then considered. Very well, he said at last. Off you go. Do your best and take care. The engines backed sightingly onto the train. The passengers marveled at the strange combination, but were thankful to have a train at all. Finally, the signal dropped and the guard blew his whistle. Come on, come on, whistled Thomas. Steady now, steady now, whistled Edward back advisingly. Soon they were on the main line and having a wonderful time. Thomas was so excited to leave the yards at Vickerstown that he nearly pulled Edward's coupling off. Edward just chuckled and smiled. He was glad to stretch his wheels again. The two engines worked so well the coaches felt light as air. Other engines were shocked as they raced past, whistling with glee. Later that day, after reaching the terminus at Knapford, they returned to Vickerstown Station, exhausted but triumphant. Henry and 87546 stood at the platform. Well, 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 smiled Henry. Our streak of blue has returned, and in one piece, no less. 87546 scowled jealously as the happy passengers swarmed out of the coaches and surrounding Thomas and Edward with admiration. What splendid little engines you are! Your controller must be very proud of you. He's very happy with all of his purchases indeed, chuckled. He's very pr happy with all of his purchases indeed, chuckled Thomas cheekingly. Oh, ha, 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 fumed 87546 as he puffed away. You were only allowed out of the yard because clanky old Edward couldn't manage alone. Enjoy your brief moment in the line of light. It's already fading. And he puffed away back, back to the sheds. If I didn't know any better, smirked Thomas, I'd say he didn't like shunting his own train. He chuckled off to the water column, laughing at his own wits. But Edward stayed behind. Are you all right, Henry? He asked. What on earth happened this morning? Oh, the usual steaming troubles, replied Henry. You know how it is. Miraculously, he winked. The problems seem to have vanished after you and Thomas have gone. You didn't, Edward gasped. Now, Edward, Henry grinned, did you really think that I would do such a thing? And without another word, Henry steamed away. Edward just smiled.